All right, in this video, I'm going to give you my top three hardware for emulation for 2018. This ended 2017 at the best, and I really do think that 2018 is going to be see more of the same. I know a lot of people want a Raspberry Pi 4 or a single board computer that's going to do all the best things, but to me, these are my top three, both considering price and performance. Now, uh, Raspberry Pi 4, like I said, probably not going to happen. There probably will be another Odroid. The Asus Tinkerboard is also kind of a competitor here, but as far as my top three, here they are. In number one, I'm going to have, or well, let's start with three. In number three, I'm going to go with the Odroid XU4. The Odroid XU4 is one of the most powerful single board computers out there right now at 2 gigahertz. It does have a Mali T628 MP6 graphics card and has 2 gigs of DDR3 RAM. The thing about this though is it does not come with, uh, it does come with a power supply if you order it on Amazon, but if you order it somewhere else, you do need to buy a power supply. And so the cost is somewhere in the ballpark of the high 50s to high 60s. And uh, again, when we're talking single board computers, you still need a monitor, you still need a micro SD card, or this does take EMC memory, which is a little faster but more expensive than a micro SD card. Uh, this will emulate your Nintendo 64, your Dreamcast much better than the Raspberry Pi. However, to me, the cost is a little higher. Moving on to number two is the Raspberry Pi 3, and most of my channel is based off this, so you know I'm a little biased, but the thing with the Raspberry Pi 3 is, is it's not the fastest, it's actually the slowest of the three that I'm bringing up for this video. It's only at 1.2 gigahertz instead of two as a different CPU configuration. It only has a Broadcom Video Core 4 series GPU, um, and it only has one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM, so slower RAM chip and less of it. So it does not perform nearly as good, but it has all the open source software. And uh, it is half the price, and it comes with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So there are a lot of benefits over the Odroid that the Raspberry Pi has. Now, the Odroid might get RetroPie um, support soon, uh, so that could change the game. But what I'm about to tell you for number one could change your decision even more. Um, but back to Raspberry Pi, it not only works for recall box, but RetroPi, along with many, many Raspbian, and many, many other front ends. So you have a lot of options with the software, and that's why it's still a really strong go-to, and it still is the most popular single board computer to ever be created. Now, in this video, I didn't put the Asus Tinkerboard, just because I feel like if I was going to go between the Tinkerboard or the Odroid, I'd go Odroid myself, but that is another option that's pretty popular. That probably would have gotten fourth place if I allowed a fourth place. Now, moving on to number one is a reused, refurbished laptop. Now, remember, with the Odroid and the Raspberry Pi, you still need controllers, you still need a micro SD card, you still need uh, a monitor all sorts of things. With the laptop, you not only get the monitor, but you typically might get HDMI out as well, depending on high, how high end of a computer you go. Now, this is an old computer I have hanging around my house. It's a 7750G. It's the computer I was using before, the computer I'm on now. And you can still get them used. I mean, they come with i5s. You get a 17-inch huge display. They have a dedicated graphics card, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and a huge hard drive. So by the time you you incorporate the cost of adding a hard drive, adding a keyboard, a mouse, everything else that you get, uh, additional USB ports, all sorts of other support. I mean, these even come with USB 3.0s. Um, a laptop really makes for a strong contender. And with a lot of free emulators like SNES 9X, you got uh, some front end softwares like Hyperspin and LaunchBox. Um, and then you have people that are porting over RetroPie and Recallbox to the PC. So you can have the same experience on a computer than you can with a single board computer. Uh, laptops are getting to a point now where the older laptops are still plenty powerful um, and still run everything just fine. Another laptop to think about is the Lenovo ThinkPad. These have great reviews. They, they're they really cheap to get now. They're really well-made laptops. And uh, you can get a lot of refer... So look at the ThinkPads and look at Acer and Asus. And don't be afraid to go refurbished. Um, even a brand new refurbished in, you know, around the $300 mark, you can get a lot of computer for a brand new certified refurbished computer. You can get a lot. And the software side is getting more and more promising. You might even be able to play, you know, GameCube or PlayStation 2 on some of these higher performing 
computers. So it really does open up the potential to do a lot more. And like I said, with the software launch box, things like that. The other thing to think about is um, we have Project 64 for Nintendo 64, which is an awesome emulator. You also have MuPin 64, which is another free emulator. So you have all these free emulators. You can also just run straight up RetroArch and RetroArch will, um, will actually install and run and sort all of your ROMs. Not only that, you could do uh, you could do Wi-Fi play, um, so you can actually play other people on other computers. So, and not only that, I mean, you know, with a laptop, you could do so much more. You could check your email, you can go to Netflix, you could do all sorts of other things. So it really does open a large possibility. Another thing is just small form factor PCs. Um, some old, you can see these old, small form factor PCs. And we're gonna see a lot more of those as well coming out, but these don't come with screens. So you might be able to save a little money getting one without a screen if you wanna hook it up to your computer, your your TV, or you uh, you know you might just have some other options. Now, word of caution with Dell computers in general, if you are gonna go the Dell route, I do recommend uh, being careful because a lot of times you cannot upgrade graphics cards on certain Dell models. Like they just don't have a slot or they don't have the potential to do it. So make sure when you do your research, you're getting a Dell that does accept some sort of graphics card because that might be the weakest link in your setup. So with all that said, these are my top three emulation hardware for 2018. Um, you know, it's just, the Odroid is looking more and more promising. It's kind of creeping up there. The Raspberry Pi 3 is still a strong contender. We got lots of images out there, a lot of stuff already done for you, a lot of plug and play. And then the cheap laptop. I mean, there's a little more configuration involved, getting it all up and running, but you know, you have a webcam, you have all these additional things that add value to the actual product itself. Um, something I didn't talk about that might be a deciding factor, is, factor to you is power consumption. Raspberry Pi 3 uses technically no power, thus making uh, a much more portable emulation um, um, option because you could power it with much less power. But then again, the laptop comes with a built-in battery and charger. So, batter, so run times and power consumption might be another um, thing to look into. But uh, here you go. These are my top three. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. When I recorded this video, the Odroid was actually sold out of stock, so it just goes to show it's a big seller. Uh, but if you are interested, I'll put links in the description below, and they should be in stock shortly.